Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week joining us from the Netherlands is Jeroen de Jong. Hi, Jeroen. Welcome to the show. Hi, Fasco. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Jeroen started his career as uh, what he calls a self-employed jack of all trades in IT and uh, eventually became passionate about Agile. And uh, he's determined to keep learning and to share his knowledge with others. And in fact, that's what he's doing here this week. So thank you for that, Jeroen. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master, Jeroen? As you already introduced me, I, I, I've been a self-employed jack of all trades. Uh, right out of high school, I started my own company and uh, I did an engineering degree. So I was a developer, mostly on PHP related. And uh, yeah, I started working for one of the uh, for another company where I was. Uh, yeah, when I started, basically the, the only work person in IT. So uh, all the IT related questions come towards me. So uh, I was developing their website, but also whenever there was a computer that, that needs fixing or anything else, uh, questions were pointing towards. So me. developer IT support. Yeah, everything. And yeah, during my time there, I also came up with a, a, an online marketing campaign. And eventually that in, online marketing campaign uh, turned out to be a really big hit here in the Netherlands. It's called uh, vakantieveilingen.nl. So uh, online auctions uh, where you can buy or you, where you can win uh, holidays and other uh, online concepts. That made the company uh, yeah, grow very rapidly and very fast. So I was from my own company. With so you were also like a product developer then, like a product manager. Might be at least, uh, uh, yeah. Back then, I, I didn't have any actual titles. I was just, yeah, one of the uh, people in there. But the, the people itself, of the, the the company itself, started growing, and uh, we we started growing the IT team. We started growing the company itself, and eventually, we sold that company, or at least the owner sold. The right? owner sold it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have any shares uh, in that company. But uh, together with uh, two of the three owners of that company, I also started my own company, an email service provider. Uh, online personalized videos, uh, online event system. So multiple things. So you could also call me an entrepreneur. And yeah, basically what I was doing was everything related in IT, whatever needs to be done at, at, at that point so in time. How, how, how did you go from jack of all trades entrepreneur to Scrum Master? Yeah, in about 2011, I, I first heard about Scrum and, and about Agile. And for me, it, it really clicked because already the, the the project I mentioned, that online marketing campaign, a lot of things we did back then, yeah, it, it was relatable to, to at least the, the empirical process and Scrum and Agile. And a lot of things that worked so great back then and that started falling apart as soon as we started professionalizing, uh, that, that actually made sense. So from 2011, I was interested in Scrum. And then I also became a Scrum Master uh, uh, for one of the projects because yeah, I followed an introduction course to, to Scrum. And we started uh, we were starting a new project and I yeah, wanted to, to give Scrum a try. And uh, yeah, more of uh, more or less logically for me, it was uh, it was an opportunity to become that scrum master and to be it. And I've been a scrum master for about a year. And after that year, I uh, yeah, switched roles to a product owner because the team itself was self-sustaining. It was uh, going pretty well. Everybody had uh, the events under control. Started knew what uh, how everything worked. And the current product owner, or at least the, the person who was uh, trying to do that role, he was struggling with his time. And I was also involved in the startup of the project. So I also knew a lot of things about it. So I, I switched roles and uh, yeah, did that for about a year. And after that, we can talk about uh, probably more about that project because that is one of my learnings I also got from there. No, maybe maybe we dive right into that. So of course, today's Monday, it's Fail Monday here on the podcast. And we talk about failures. Now, of course, we, we want to explore failures as a source of lessons learned. But we do want to know the story, the things behind the, you know, the small things that were happening that led to that failure. So tell us that story, your own. Uh, as I was already saying, that this this first project of mine, I learned I learned a lot of things on there, and we also eventually filled uh, pretty big time in it. One of the first things that I learned was when I was trying to to uh, to be that scrum master for the team. Yeah, I was actually 
being the strong police, as, as everybody calls it during the trainings nowadays. So I was just, uh, this is uh, this is what says in the book. So this is what we're going to do. And uh, I was not never explaining the why to them. Uh, a lot of things seemed natural for me, seemed uh, logical for me. Uh, but there were a couple of people in the team who, yeah, we were struggling with that. Well, uh, why are we going to do a retrospective every time? We're just working. So why are we every two weeks? Is this way too often? Can we do it one, once every uh, four weeks or uh, once every, yeah, well, when we need it instead of uh, having it mandatory there? Same for the daily scrum. And back then I was just introducing it as well. The scrum guide says we need to do a daily every day. So we need to do a daily every day. And uh, we need to do a retrospective. So we're going to do that retrospective uh, without explaining why, without actually very. So what, what happened when it. you tried to be the scrum police? Uh, there was a lot of resistance. <laughs> I was you know, starting to struggle more and more. Well, I see this process. I want this, this process to work because I've, I've. So you were focusing on making the process work. Yeah. Instead of actually feeling what, is, what the team was needing and, and uh, what was happening and what, what we actually needed. But eventually, I think after after at least some months, but maybe even uh, half a year, the team started getting going. It's it's starting uh, to, uh, started to work, and uh, yeah, we were actually releasing something, and that was eventually the, the biggest learning uh, I, I got out of that project, because we we were releasing to our internal customer and to our in, internal stakeholders, and those internal stakeholders were basically an investment firm who uh, gave us a lot of money to to. Uh, realize a concept that we were thinking about. Yeah, we promised them that that big UFO, that that Ferrari with with all the uh, everything in it. So uh, yeah, the, the stakeholders and also initially that the product owner and ourselves, we weren't satisfied until we we reached that stage. So we were making small increments, but nobody actually saw, at least not the actual customers that we were aiming so for. Not real increments, like you were developing software incrementally, but you were not really putting it out there, right? No, we were not getting any feedback from the customers, and that eventually uh, was the downfall of uh, of the project, and eventually even the, the whole company, because uh, yeah, well, our idea was to disrupt a little bit the, the entertainment market. Normally, when you, you you buy a ticket for a concert or something, uh, yeah, there's a concert, so there's already somebody hired uh, the, the artist or the the performers to do something. They already have the the location settled. They uh, everything is set up, and then they're going to 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 try to get people in there and we want to socialize that so we wanted to to grow a base of, of in, people who are already interested in in certain music and in artists in, in locations and with that data uh, started organizing events in the future uh, our goal was well uh, if we have uh, an online platform where people can check into events can can find new events can experience can contact can can share information about upcoming events that would be great that was our dream so when we actually finished that that product and we were confident well uh, our platform now is is ready for production we went live and nobody was there <laughs> Yeah, there was no community. There was there no, was no com community yeah. yet. There was no data Actually, yet. Actually, th th this is a very good reminder. That's something we don't often talk about here on the podcast. So thank you for m bringing this story to us. This idea that very often we talk about Agile as being kind of team-centric, like you know the, the development practices, the collaboration, and so on. But at the end of the day, Agile did not come from the need to have teams develop more software, right? Like Agile came from the, the need of having teams deliver software that satisfies customers. Who, you know, whatever their, their definition of satisfaction is, it's up to them to, to make it, not up to the team. This story reminds us also that as Scrum Masters, we always need to keep an eye on the actual end goal. It's not just the process. It's not just the collaboration. It's also the end goal. Like, what? Why are we even using Agile, and what are we trying to achieve as a as an organization? Uh, and not only like concentrate on the how we do certain things, like you know how to host retrospectives and so on. So that's a very important reminder also for us as Scrum Masters that we need to keep an eye on what the business goals are. Yeah, indeed. And for me, it was, uh, back then, it still wasn't. We were still still trying to figure out, well, what are we doing wrong? How can we get new customers in? Uh, how can we satisfy the basically the suppliers of events? Because we also wanted to, to show cost upcoming events on the platform. Uh, we were trying a lot of things. And basically, the, 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 yeah, I saw the light a couple of years ago, uh, later when I actually realized, well, 
you know, we should have yeah started growing that community right from the start. So maybe instead of going to with, with, the, with that big platform, just launch with with just a calendar with with information in there with, that people can can see, and then from that point uh, maybe uh, sign up an account so you can get notified about events. Then. Uh, um, uh, 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 mark or favorite your events that you want to go to and, and then yeah gradually f- actually incrementally build that and then start using incrementally it. build the product not the software like that's that's the the really big contrast uh, it's a it's a great example thank you for sharing that story Jeroen. Mm-hmm. hey friends it's vasco again now with a bit longer announcement I'm part of the team that is behind the Global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is a place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing keynotes and seven tracks that feature people like you, and of course, thought leaders sharing their insights, their knowledge, and helping you become an awesome Scrum Master. You can check out all of the details of the summit, including the keynotes announced, the track chairs, and much more at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. That's all one word. That's bit.ly forward slash SM S-U-M-M-I-T and the numeral 22. I'll see you on the conference floor.